I want to, pr first of all, um, pay homage to all of the women on a global level. I want to say we rock. I want to pay homage to those women in Afghanistan, Iran, Asia, and all over. I want to, I want to recognize women on a global level that are being murdered, raped, that are struggling to survive, that are being tortured because of their gender. I did it in a couple of ways. This is a tattoo, my most recent one, which I'm quite proud of. Um, basically, you can't really see it, but it's a sword. It's got the uh, pentagram, crescent moon. Yes, I tattoo my body. I have one back here and, oh, that, just kidding. But <laughs> I have a poem that I'm going to. I'm saying this specifically because as a poet and writer and any time that I have the opportunity to do a reading, I'm always thrown back at me. Um, my, like, and I, very unwittingly, I'm sure, people respond with, oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, to be an Aboriginal woman in Canada and then immediately go to Afghanistan. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is so Canadian. Let's not look at our own backyard. So when I was, <clears throat> I don't even remember, I was trying to remember how old I was when I came up with this, um, this one particular poem. And then I'm gonna do some readings from this very, very quickly. This is a, a, an accumulation, this one poem uh, entitled Long Wind Walk. I think I might have been, I don't know how old I was, somewhere between 28 and 34. I sat down one evening in my little pad in Saskatoon, where I lived at the time, and for the next 40 minutes wrote this poem. And this is how it begins. This is one of three, I guess they're called verses, eh? I'm not educated, I have to tell you. If you read my book, you'll know what I'm referring to. <sighs> Truth tastes putrid in a glass a mile long. Like the last mile I walked in my bronze skin, freshly painted the Mary Kay way, Defacing dances with wolves, stereotype casted squaw with my red lipstick, second language of English, but not by choice. Blue nun sliced my mother's native tongue in the residential school. Then I lost myself on a journey towards Indianness where I met a messed up medicine man who fondled my tits as he doctored my spirit with his hands on treatment. Along the way, I met wet behind the ears white guy who confused me with immigration by asking if he could fuck me to officially become a Canadian. Seems you're not a real Canadian till you've had an Indian woman. He reminded me of a brown skinned bro who told me Indian women never say no. Shattering my mirror image with fragmented pieces of stolen silence before I spoke, I existed in their minds as something less than skinned meat left to rot on a sidewalk. She stood on the corner, waiting for the red light to turn green to give her permission to pass. And it goes on and on and on like this. And it's from that verse, I, uh, I mean, as a writer and a poet, I'm assuming we can only write from what we experience our own experiences. Um, I wrote this, po this book, Morning Star, A Warrior Spirit, with some very, very specific objectives. Uh, my intention was fairly clear. And that is that I remember I would pray prior to sitting down at my computer or laptop or what have you. And my prayer was very simple. God, God asks, Please help me to touch the hearts of those who read this book. Help me to share with compassion and humanity and give a view and a window into the life of a child and the psyche of a child who's molested so that I could 
show and give a blueprint of what it is that eventually makes a woman or a man decide to sell their body on the streets. What would provoke me to do that aside from it just being my experience is that having worked extensively um, on the front line with women who are living high-risk lifestyles and having worked extensively with children who are sexually exploited and abused, 